So I grew up in, in church from the day I was born in G. People in the family were religious. So the religiousness made us believe that, oh, because if we do certain things, we are aligned with, with God or we are aligned with Christianity. So that became part of our, like my second nature. I knew how to pray. I knew how, to, I even preached. I think I preached at the age of 14. And when I preached, a girl at school, I don't know what she saw with which eyes, said, you have, you are shining. You, I don't know Jesus. Eh? <laughs> and this, at this time, I'm at an age where I know good and bad. So I'm in my 14, 15, and I know dating is wrong, lying is wrong. So it's not like, no, she was still young. Maybe she was still in vision. No, it was the whole religious background. So from that age in church, just continue thinking that if I just do what I saw other people around me doing, then I'm right with God. I, I actually thought I was born again. I thought I was saved. Hmm? But in my thinking that I'm saved, I still slept with my boyfriend. I still went to clubs and came in the morning and did other crazy things. I still lied. I was manipulative. My attitude was bad. So everything that was supposed to be Christ-like was not evident. But because I was in church where they say, no, she, she's just working out her testimony. Let her do what she needs to do. God is working on her until one day she just grows into her calling. Because when I was in church, I used to get prophetic words. You are called for this. You'll be this. And that made me even stay worse in, in, in that um, deception. I used deception. So I was deceived. And I, I had pride. Oh, I had pride. I had pride in who God called me to be. And you could not tell me anything different. Mm -hmm. Fast forward. I needed to go to school. I, I started school. And I, I, in my life until I was born again, I never finished anything. I studied degrees. I never finished. I studied certificates for six months. I never finished. So everything that was supposed to be, you are a Christian. You're supposed to be loving. I did not show it. But everyone around me kept telling me, you're okay. God will sort it out. So fast forward, I'm in my mid-20s. And my agreement with Satan made me a, a, a witch, but not people say practicing. I wasn't practicing. But Can everything I said. to them what it means to have agreement with Satan? Clarify. So the, the life that I lived. One, I was in church. But I drank, I, I, I fornicated full time. No, 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 no. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm not eating. I'm not drinking. We used to call them Esther fast. So we are praying <laughs> in tongues. And I used to pray in demonic tongues forcefully. Uh, everything. <laughs> everything. Because anything and spiritually, the demons will manifest and deliver what we were praying for. Now I can say that before I didn't know. I was like, yeah, God has answered my prayers. I prayed for three days and this is what happened. But when I come out of the three-day three day prayer, the next morning, not a week later, maybe no, now you've black backslidden. There's no such thing as back, back, backsliding. The next day, I leave the church. I say, amen. I go to my boyfriend's house. So you cannot tell me that I was born again. But I thought I was because the church that I was in kept saying, I don't know. Ask for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. You will get better. You will grow. <laughs> grow in sin, eh? I grew in sin because it became worse. And my mind was stolen from me. From, from the smoking, from the drinking, from being in clubs, from living, trying to be good when I'm not good. It drove me crazy. I lost my mind. I didn't know my mind had gone until I met someone who's born again and say, you're not born again. Then the process. But let's, let's fast forwarding. So in, in, in the lifestyle that I lived, I acquired, I use the word acquired, additional demons. So by the time that I'm in my 30s, I'm like, ha, ah, something is wrong. Like how those people are saying, you know that something is wrong, but you've lived a fake life so much. You have to fake it some more. I faked it when I arrived in Korea. I joined a, a ch chapel, school chapel. I became the choir leader. And I led with my high priestess, queen of the coast powers, because it wasn't <laughs> Jesus. True, truth be told. Oh my God. Whatever but demon I, that I acquired. Can I interject really quick? 
one of the things you guys are hearing this testimony, but it, what, she wasn't like, oh, that's a witch. Everybody loved Kanye. She's so cute. Everybody, she's the good. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so I'm in the choir. I'm singing, and and I I used to feel goosebumps. Yeah, warm. It, it's warm. The the presence of whatever spirit it was, because it wasn't Jesus Christ. But then that went on for quite a while to the point where there will be things that were done in church or in the chapel. Now, when I look back, it was just me having a higher ranking principality or demon in me. And I was controlling and manipulating everyone. So all the small demons were bowing down. And looking back now, I remember that I was drawn to people with the same spirits. So how Dr. B will say, if you don't mind me saying, no, your demons and their demons are high fighting. So I didn't have real friends or real love or real connections because it was just demons in higher ranks bowing to the lower ranking ones. And it was it, it didn't make sense. It didn't feel right. Mind you, they're all in church. Girl, you'll be all right. Oh God, you'll be all right. Girl, you'll be all but go ahead. Yes. <laughs> and then we met. Is it okay if I say we met Dr. Sure, B? God damn it, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you. And she she comes to the chapel. And I use my fingers, not by mistake. She comes to the chapel because everything about the chapel now, looking back, none of us were born again. None of us were trying to be born again. It was just a manifestation of ranks. Demons yeah. play. Project really yeah. quick. The way I found out about the chapel, I had a student from Uganda. And the student from Uganda invited me to her church. She said it was a church. She didn't say chapel. And I said, why would I go to church with you? You're not saved. And she's like, oh, Dr. Hayne. I'm like, okay, first of all, you cheat on exams in your other classes. You gossip. You are hurt by the racist people in the school. And you're always crying, oh, they're racist. They're racist. They don't like me. I'm like, oh, wait, but I thought you knew Jesus. I'm not going to church with you. That's crazy. Two weeks later, I have a dream. That's a whole nother story. God tells me to go to her church. Okay. Before I go to the church, I'm in an elevator. Now there's not a lot of black people in the school. I'm on the elevator. The doors open and this one is coming onto the elevator. So she looks at me. She's like, oh, hello. And she turns around. She puts her back to me and she leans her head against the wall of the elevator. And I thought to myself, should I tell this chick she got a demon hanging on her back or what? I'm, I ain't gonna say nothing. That's how we first met. I walk into the church, the chapel. I walk in and there are little imps. You know what imps are, right? Small demons. Do you guys know about the giant imps along the walls of the, the, the room? They're practicing. They had been singing it. They're practicing and the imps are going like this. Hmm. Okay, wait for it. And I'm like, oh, I really don't want, I really don't want to be in this place right now. Okay, so they have service. Go ahead. What happened after service? Mm. And then we have Bible study. So in the Bible study, we sit in a circle and we asked, oh, no, we started reading the, the, the Bible. We started reading the verses. Everyone gave their opinion of what they thought that particular scripture meant highlights i said opinion because none of us are saved so we don't know what we're talking about but because it's a practice it's a, it's a religious thing that everyone does we did bible study and then doctor says now can can you tell me how you got born again just her asking that question all the demons from adam manifested in the room <laughs> all the types all the now I can say that in, in the room, we just, we, we're just agitated and angry because now there's someone who is born again, authority asking a, a simple question. How did you get born again? But the fact that someone is trying to take away from your prideful position, you feel threatened. Now mind, now you, just really quick, mind you, you had South Africa, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, South Korea, Malaysia, Cambodia, and Cambodia in that room. So you have international demons, <laughs> regional demons. Yes. Yeah? Okay, go ahead. And mind you, so I just asked, okay, tell me how you got born again. Because I don't use fingers the way she, I was like, just tell me how you got born again. Every single person started manifesting. 
Go ahead. One by one. And we all started. We, uh, we all started uh, saying what how we thought we met Jesus. Eh? All the lies, all the fantasies we were speaking. Eh? And well, the, the Queen of the Coast at the time, born again, Father, thank you for saving me. The Queen of the Coast then thought, I've got this. I'm the leader, right? So I should be the one with the most valuable born again experience. I I don't even remember what, I, what lie I said, but I started saying a very long lie. How Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and this is how I met him. I don't even remember the lie, Father, thank you. Serious. Because back then I could repeat what I said, now I can't. So yeah, that's goodish. So I started creating a story to keep me believing that I really, really had an encounter where I've never had one. Because I, I used to have dreams. I used to have dreams of things that people should not see. But then that to me explained, oh, it, it made me believe because I'm dreaming of spiritual things, I should be born again. I must have some power. But then witches have power too. Mm. Demons are spirits. They are spirits. And all they're looking is for a word. Say something stupid. <laughs> we'll come and join you on your party. So, because I was foolish. So I was, and I, I used to curse people, but I didn't know. You know. We'll see. When someone does something wrong and you go, we'll see. But because of my 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 spirituality, if I can say it like that, that manifests and people got hurt. Here I am, I'm a Christian, cursing people and people are getting hurt. I'm not born again at that time. So we start a long journey. Now, I have to be convinced. I use the word convinced because I was very stubborn. I Stubborn does not explain the pride that I rode on. When people ride on horses, I rode on pride with a flag galloping. <laughs> so now... Dr. Hammond called us for Bible study and not even trying. She was pointing us, not even trying, pointing us to Jesus. This is what the Bible says. You don't look like that. This is what, and by God's grace, I even went to these Bible studies, studies to listen because everything in me didn't want to go. I remember I used to cry. I used to take a shower in tears. When God says it's your time to repent, I used to cry physical, salty tears. And I'm putting lotion to go and be cut at a Bible study. I know if I go there, I'm going to be told the truth that I don't want to hear because pride does not want to be corrected. Mm. But but by God's mercy, I managed to dress up, get on the bus, get on the train, walk a kilometer to go and just be told that you're a liar. Mm. You're not born again. <laughs> I've never called you. I've never... I've never. I understand, but it's the reality for my end. I'm summarizing. She she's never said a bad word. She's actually she's never actually called out and said, you know what, you are a firewood for hell. She's never. But I'm summarizing because this <laughs> because this took a while because I was very stubborn. I just she will point the scripture and I will have a superseded understanding that I wouldn't want to listen to her. So even when I was listening to you, Chris, explain. It's things we grew up hearing. We hear these things and they make sense when we heard them and we try to live by them, but you can't live according to the word when you don't have the word in you, who is the word Jesus Christ. So that's where the, the drama and the, the, the pain and the confusion and the hurt and the disappointment. Because if you think you know God and you keep praying to something and it doesn't show up, you blame God. You start hating and resenting him, but you never knew him for you to resent him. Mm -hmm. I summarize. And then it took a while. And then at first I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to listen until I realize, okay, fine. First step, I'm not born again. I am not born. I've never been born again. So I didn't backslide. It wasn't, okay, now let's try and get you back on the set. No, I was, ne I've never encountered Jesus Christ of this Bible and received him. So that was the first step, which took about two years. Two years of love. Huh? I, I say this, I'm looking, because... I was not a, not a nice person. I was filthy. My attitude was bad, like seriously bad. May After I, I realized, that, okay, now I'm not born again. Really quick. Yeah. 2016 is when I met her and the other group of people. I had planned on leaving South Korea and God told me I could not leave, I had to stay. 
And when he said to stay, it was to meet that group. The witches and warlocks that would astral project into my house because of these people. Do you understand? And I was like, God, I had dreams about the great, great grandmother doing witchcraft, seeing their houses. And mm. God would say, I want this one. I want that one. I'm like, God. And I would hear the demon gossip, demons, you can hear demons gossiping, right? They sound like little children playing, but screeches. And I would have visions of them gossiping about me. And then I would hear God say, now go buy them coffee, go buy them books. Go. And I'm like, did you not hear? So I would call them, hey, can we meet at the whatever, Tejon station, whatever. Mind you, they're all nervous, like, because they, they don't know that I know but they're just nervous. And I'm like, well, God told me I need to give you this, give you money for this, give you this, and I'll believe. Yeah. Later on, they told me once being saved, it was like, you know, that day you did that, we were just talking about you. Like, who does she think she is? We saved her. I was like, really? Well, I heard the yeah. demons. I didn't hear you guys, but I heard the demons. Continue. Yeah, true, true. To the point where even when we lacked stuff, like clothing or we didn't have school books, Dr. Hemo would show up and say, here's a jacket. Love, um, I was I almost broken as well. I was freezing. And she loved me into realizing that I'm actually destined for hell. Going to hell. I'm not destined anymore. So after that, it was, now read the word until you realize you're not born again. I'm not born again. But then now I once said it's so bad. Mm. But then I had this filth in my head of who I created Jesus to be. Because growing up in church, we have an image of what Christianity is, who God is, what Jesus is supposed to look like. So my first, not my first, not my, sec my second false encounter, because I've, I've, I've had seven false conversions. I have went to the pulpit and confessed Christ seven times, which were all false. But on the second one, which was kind of big because I knew now I wasn't born again. I remember we were at a conference and the preacher was tech talking about being born again. If you're not, he didn't say saved. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, because that's what they say, come to the front and have an encounter. But I had an image of who Jesus, what, I say what Jesus should look like. So I went to the pulpit, all crying, hands up. I am ready to surrender now that I know that I'm not born again. Now take me. But it wasn't repentance because I'm fallen. It was like, I've lived a lie, but I, now I want the truth. I knelt down, if I can testify. A demon that looked like the Jesus I created in my head showed up in that pulpit. He didn't show up in a club or down the streets where people like, no, in church. I'm kneeled down and I'm saying the sinner's prayer. Jesus, come into my heart. You, all these words, I can't even remember them. But I'm saying all of that. And then I have a vision of a man glowing with a blue sachet and Jewish hair. like All the things that we, we see. So I have a visual, visual things that I've taken in and I've created a, a, an image, an idol. And the, the demon said, okay, since you think about me all the time, let me show up. And I remember hugging that entity. I hugged it. It entered my body. Because I came into agreement. It wasn't Jesus Christ. But then after that, I stood up. Everyone in the church was celebrating. Oh, and I shared with them. I just saw this. I said, Jesus came to me. Jesus hugged me. Jesus. Everything, right? Everyone in the church is celebrating. Someone gave me candy. All the mothers are hugging. And then Dr. Hammett is looking at me like suspect. <laughs> She's loving, guys. Whenever I say things, I know I say things in a funny way, but she was she was really looking at me like, are you born again? Because her heart is up for souls. So all these dramatic things that all this is happening, it, it didn't face her. But she was looking at me like, hmm. Mm. Then next week, we were supposed to meet somewhere in the city. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> I told F... You know, when you lie, like, your father is the devil. Because he was still my father. So I lied. Mm. We were supposed to meet, I think I'll give an example, probably 10. And Dr. Hermes is strict with time. So if you're meeting at 10, it's 10. It's 10 to. 
you don't come out, there's no African time here. So I'm running late. Uh, an honest, truthful person who's been regenerated will say, um, excuse me, I'm running 10 minutes late. I'm so sorry, I missed it. Just be honest. No, not the witch. I am around the corner. I am <laughs> just there now, now. And then she says, which corner? And by Tom, it was Tom Tom's, by Tom Tom's. I just got off the train. It takes about 10 minutes to get to Tom Tom's. She's by Tom Tom's. She's looking at Tom Tom's. And she says, I'm by the corner. You're not here. I'm like, I'm there. <laughs> I don't remember this, but okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't and, know. and then after that, and I'm running. And when I got, when I finally arrived, she just looked at me as like, but how are you confident in your lies when you say you've received Jesus? So everything again in me was still just pure evil. Because if 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 you've done something wrong, the, the the Christian will say, yeah, I was wrong, I apologize. But a witch or a liar, um, 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 the agent of Satan will say something else, which I did. So I mean, she's like, but then you are, you're supposed to receive Jesus last week, just yesterday, and you are this, you are like, and my attitude in in, in your correction was a stamp but you know you did not receive I don't know what you met at that pulpit it wasn't Jesus because even as she's correcting me I am not <laughs> physical because I know how to keep cute face eh I can be cute and like <laughs> inside I'm throwing daggers <laughs> so inside I was just angry and just annoyed like you don't understand things just didn't happen in time so what I'm here now let's continue Oh, Definitely I need on. to grow. That was it. I need to grow. Do you understand why? Do I need to take time and grow in my? I need to learn how to be. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I knew I had a false conversion. So another couple of months, and still because my thing was, I, 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 I can be born again. So everything I was doing, I was doing out of my own understanding and trying to be born again in my own strength. So I need to understand it to live it, which is wrong. Fast forward to when I finally got born. And, oh no, this last one, the one when I when, when I became the head of the regional, which is in 2019, because that one, that one really, really shook me. It, you know, when the Bible says, Jesus will say, get away from me. And they will say, we cast out devils, we heal the sick. In 2019, something bad happened. I did, I did something bad to someone who is loving, right? And the person said goodbye. This we cut ties. I will never see you again. And I felt it like, yeah, no, God's mercy has ended. This has ended for me, right? I go into the house. I'm crying. I'm like, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because I wasn't saying Jesus. If if you have mercy on me, save me. I'm crying. I cried for three days nonstop. But in the crying and conjuring myself into salvation. Again, I end a, a, an entity. I know it was a high ranking because I shaved my head after that. A high ranking entity entered my body. And I how I felt, I was sitting on the chair and I'm crying, I'm weeping. I'm, I'm distraught that I've lost the only love I've ever seen. The only love I've ever felt. Eh, nothing has ever felt like the person in my life. So I'm trying to comfort myself. God save me, save me now. If you can save me. I, you know, now I said, but everything is in my own strength. I received the entity. The tears dried up like, like Sahara. I wiped my face. I was stronger than before. What did I think? I thought I've received Jesus. He's giving me the peace. My tears are gone. Now I'm born again. I shaved my head. Now, have you ever heard anyone who's born again says, I got saved and I shaved my head? Because only monks. And then people who I have devoted themselves to a certain entity do that. And I had a shaved head for two years. I wore, I wore a head wrap hiding the snake underneath for two years. But in those two years, I'm healing the sick. I am preaching. I am praying for people. I am speaking demonic wor words of wisdom. I'm prophesying. I'm dreaming. I'm doing everything that looks like I'm born again. Fast forward to 2021. Yes, two years. 2021, again, it was, you're not born again. We watched a couple of videos 
and then I realized, okay, I'm not born again. I don't know what happened then. I am not born again. And I stopped. It, it's a long testimony. I'm summarizing it where it was like, you know what? I'm going to get baptized, but I'm getting baptized to say, I don't want to be a fake anything. I don't want no Kundalini spirits. I don't want no entity, no imp, no demon. I don't want no false Jesus. I want Jesus Christ of this Bible, I want Holy Spirit alone. So I got baptized just to say, I'm tired. You know, every lie, everything that I've agreed with that is demonic, I don't want it anymore. So now the journey of stop, stopping to be my own God and trying to control my own salvation started in 2021. And I came back because I was in a different country. I came back, I stopped reading the Bible. I stopped praying. I stopped faking it. I stopped trying to make it. I stopped trying to be the good that I see in Christians that I'm not. And in that, even when I'm, I was mean, I, I, used to, I used to show Dr. Hammett that I used to go into the office and I would say something bad. And I would say, yeah, I'm bad. So, but before when I was trying to be a Christian, I was like, oh no, I'm so sorry. I don't know where that came from. It was, no, it was like, that's, that's my heart. That's in my heart. Yes, I'm wicked. But it wasn't, I'm condemning myself, but I was acknowledging what I'm feeling, not trying to pretend to be nice or trying to be a Christian. So I stopped. And I remember the day I got saved, I was not in church. I wasn't trying to see a vision. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to manipulate salvation. Let me put it like that. Mm. I was laying down. I woke up and my head was singing, I believe in God the Father. And I remember saying with my lips, no, I don't. Mm. Before I would have rolled with that song, but the song and me, what what the words and what I believed did not add up. But I got to a point where I wasn't saying religious things because I'm used to them. So as I'm hearing the song in my head, I believe in I'm like, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Jesus. And from saying that, it was, I don't know how to explain it. It was as if I'm, my the Holy Spirit was convicting me of my sin i knew i was a sinner but it is the knowing to be a sinner came with salvation yes i don't know how spiritually it happened but i know that my saying no to a lie jesus christ saved me and i remember as as this thing is this whole experience is happening when I finally opened my eyes, I knew for a fact without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is real and he resurrected. Because I remember when I called Dr. Hammond, I was like, I didn't believe in the resurrection. Jesus Christ rose on the third day. I've read that he rose how many times? For 30 years. But I never believed it until I was convicted and repented of my sins and received the one who is Jesus Christ. And then I can say he is. Because I was like, he's real. But I've been saying he's real for 30 years. But that day I got saved. I knew it was he is. And it wasn't I was saying he's real. I was saying he is. is in, is. There's no beginning. There's no, I, I'm not looking at him from the before. I'm not looking at him in revelation. He is. He, he is. There's no other word to explain it. And from then, I've never wavered, but the, the lessons are my mind where that's not what the word of God says. That's not what the word of God says. Do you believe the word of God or you don't believe it? But it's never, oh, today I'm, I'm anxious, tomorrow I'm, it's never that. So to summarize all of that, I've had, oh, hi, my name is Nogukanya. I have seven false conversion and Jesus Christ saved me one time and one time only. Nice to meet you. Thank you for that. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it short because it, it, there's, there's more that happened. But the, the, the thing of being in church and church to the point where you believe what you've lived for so long is real. And it doesn't save anyone, but it keeps you in a cycle of just deception. And people in church will keep you in a deception by telling you, oh, no, it's okay. Because the church actually said to me, 
that person is building up their testimony. Let them sin so they can build up their testimony. So if I had died the next day, I would have gone straight to hell trying to, to build my testimony. Now, how can I testify in hell? So that when it comes to religiousness, because, yeah, you know, so until you receive Jesus Christ, not the one that we've been hearing about, but we don't, don't have any encounter with, you're not born again. And people don't want to say, you're not born again. You're born again. Ask questions until someone realizes they're not born again. But people are in church. And they. when I say in, 20, in 2019, I truly believe when I finally realized, I, was, I cried because I really thought I was destined for heaven. So when I read the scripture, after I realized I spent two years serving Satan and pushing his propaganda on people who are innocent, I hated it. I hate it. It, it scared me that I could be in church, cursing people in church as a Christian. Get away from me, you doers of iniquity. Not you were some, sometimes nice, sometimes good, and then some day you backslid. No, you doer of iniquity. I never knew you. See, that verse after that, ah, it scared me because people will hear that who were in church doing the things that they thought they were doing for Jesus when it was not him. Do you guys have any questions, comments? For me, there's so much to process from everything she has said. So I'm really just internalizing it. And I am able to relate with a lot of things she said, being that I'm also someone that grew up in church. And so many things you have said sincerely have also made me in my head question so many things about my um my faith, my upbringing, and the way it, it is that the church, you know, the church definitely had um had a part to play in my own supposed um salvation. So um all the things you are saying is giving me that rethink to question all these things in my head so I can relate very well so I think that's all I can say I am really still just processing things but thank you for sharing thank you so much for sharing you can record that always Jesus Archbishop uh, <laughs> who is that oh <laughs> uh, well that was a good answer yeah if you answered i would say oh so now you're archbishop yeah like um yeah kind of know like and actually release with that because we shared the same uh on sunday when we we're talking you remember kaya i also mm -hmm. shared the same uh yeah experience with you i mean growing up in church and then you know thinking because your parents are ministers or they're pastors and then by default you think you actually saved until the encounter actually came you know like i told her and i think i also told that to be that was before she now transferred me to kaya <laughs> i mean if i spoke with her <laughs> i i that was oh, oh that was got me the good news but okay <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were myself, I kind of had a nice time on the phone then. Yeah. So, and, um, you know, I I said uh, the assumption on your head, you know, like, because you grew up in church, you were thought morals by your parents, you had a very sound Christian background. Yeah. So th that actually helped. Right. So you would think, okay, because you're acting right. Yeah. That doesn't mean maybe one was not lying. Or you weren't, um, you know, uh, doing things that you're not supposed to do. But then I, I remember I told Kanye that, you know, morally, it seems like, yeah, one was good. You remember Kanye, I, I mentioned something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of the kind of background you have. So, I mean, then, yeah. So, you know, morally, you think, okay, yeah, fine. Because I'm doing what I'm supposed to do morally. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm saved, right? But then that was just a wrong assumption. Yeah, because even you will find um, Muslims that are morally right. I mean, they act morally. I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? Character-wise, you're yeah, fine, you're good. But then does that mean they are saved? No. 
So that was the uh, church assumption or something that, excuse me, that actually had on my head until I also had an encounter. And then familiarity actually also played a big role. You're familiar with, your parents are ministers, so you're familiar with that. And then, you know, being in church, she said something. She said even at the age of 14, she was preaching, she was speaking in tongues. If you can remember, I said the same thing. Oh. Yeah, yeah. right, yeah. Like even I was sorry, I was preaching in the in the in the children church. There was a time I was asked, we had children program, and then for the old church, I was asked to preach. I and I preached. Yeah, I mean the old church. Yeah. And I was about 14 to 10. But then mm. still, yeah. And mm -hmm. still that doesn't mean one was saved at that time, right? Yeah. So until until uh, I actually had that encounter also, personal encounter also. And then that's, and, and like like I mentioned too, it's the conviction, there the, the just needs to be a conviction, right? And that would be the turning point. Just that conviction that, oh yeah, actually this is not what I'm, this is, you think you, you think you are, yeah, but then, the moment you, you know, the moment the Holy Spirit actually breaks you down and know and tells you that, hey, no, this is the way working it. That is when you know, oh, wow, whatever I've been doing is just like um, religious activities. Mm -hmm. Because we actually need, that is where the, the Holy Spirit will now come in. We need the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I know the Holy Spirit will actually help us, even as a Christian, now you know, okay, the things you're doing, you're not actually supposed to be doing this. And that is why in the um I wanted to read a verse earlier on. Um the, that is uh, let me see. Sorry. Second Peter 3:18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory now and forever. So how do we grow, grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ? After be, being saved, that is the Holy Spirit that helps you to grow. It also helps you to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord. And so that was, I think that was what I was trying to tell Dr. B on Sunday when I when she said I should tell her uh, about my experience. Right. And I and I was like, you know, the moment the moment you're saved, then that thirst even to grow will come. Right. That thirst even to grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ will actually come. And then you will know that oh yeah you're not okay if you're not if you don't pray you're not okay if you don't fast you're not okay if you don't you don't feel right you don't feel like you're doing right because the Holy Spirit is there to actually give you a knowledge that you're supposed to do this and then guide you guide you on the way on the path to go. I I think two weeks ago we spoke about the place of the Holy Spirit, Chris, right in a Bible study. Was it two weeks ago? Yeah, the place of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit we actually guide you on the path to go teach you what to do we know the is the spirit the holy spirit will actually teach you what to do the holy spirit we actually and then i remember we were talking about how the holy spirit speaks to people it doesn't have to come physically it's not some people like I, some people say they, they've had the audible voice some it could be a still small voice right there are various ways by which the holy spirit speaks to people or communicates with people yeah some it can be inner witness that's another way the Holy Spirit talks to people. God will said you hear on Sunday, you hear him here. Yeah, 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 yeah. For some, it could be in inner witness, right? For some, it could be the still small voice. Yeah, so different ways by which so it's but for you to be able to know which one, then you should even know how to hear that that voice when it speaks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I can actually relate with what she said and um Thank God for you, Minister Kaya. Minister Kaya. <laughs> so, I'm, did you all do? Because I actually have to pack. Yes. Um, would you mind if I pray for all of us before? Yes, yes, definitely. Father, first and foremost, we thank you, Lord, that today is the day that you have made and we will rejoice in it. Lord, I lift up to you now and decree and declare that she will have supernatural rest as she sleeps. Mm -hmm. for two hours. How many hours do you have? Is it two? Three. 
three hours. Lord, you said that you give your children sweet sleep. And in Zephaniah 316, you said you sing over your children. So we decrease deep sleep. And you also said that you speak to your children in night season. So Lord, speak those things which you would have her to know about who you are, how you are. So when she be with for the day that she's able to proclaim your goodness and who you are over them as she encounters, not just even her co-workers. Lord, I cancel every word curse, thought curse, intercessory prayer that has been prayed, said, stuck, um, thought, even gossip about her off her life. We break that now in the name of Jesus. And we mm. decree the blessings, Lord. I thank you, for, Lord. I thank you for the heart that you have given him to teach people whatever needs to be taught. But Lord, we thank you that you will give him more revelation knowledge of your word from Genesis to Revelation, from when you said in the beginning, God created to where in the end in Revelation, where you said you're going to return again. Lord, may the word come alive to him. May when he mm. read it, the Holy Spirit, give him the deep secrets of who you are that are revealed to those who have a heart to know who you are and how you are. When his eyes see the words on the page, Lord, may the multifaceted wisdom that you have in your word be seen. We thank you for his life. We thank you for his wife and his children, his child and children. Mm -hmm. And we thank you that they have everything that they need, Lord, while he's away, that they're protected and that they're covered by you, Lord. And Jesus, mm -hmm. we thank you for his family in Nigeria, Lord. Mm -hmm. Everything that they need, which is you first and foremost, that they have revelation of your goodness, Lord. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for her life. We thank you for her humility to ask questions, Father. Only those who are humble in spirit, Lord, and have a contrite heart do you are you pleased with. Lord, give her understanding, revelation of who you are and how you are. Father, you said those who didn't seek you will find you. But in order for them to seek you, they have to even know that you exist. So that's where the seeking comes from. Holy Spirit, you are the one that gives us all knowledge, understanding, and wisdom of who Jesus is and how he is. May that be this portion as she is here, even away from Nigeria, to focus on the things that you will have her not to do, but to be in you, Jesus. May this time here in Turkey be the time that is spent away with you and in you, Lord, for her to walk out of this country knowing that it was in Turkey, this nation where the book of Revelation, the books, of the churches that are talked about in the book of Revelations are found here in Turkey, Lord. Lord, I cancel the plans of the enemy to come into her to, to continue to steal, kill, and destroy her joy, her peace, Lord, because you are joy, you are peace, Lord. Every single person that's in her life that means a harm, we decree and declare that they need now in the name of Jesus. Every mm. single person that she needs to meet in order for her to take care of her visas, and this is a visas or the house, not even just for now or in the future, or whatever the situation is, Lord, we say that you place the individuals behind the counter for where they have to engage, maybe business for banking, visas, um, permits, and all of that. And even when they travel, may it be traveling back home, either to Brazil or Nigeria, Lord, may they have the same favor that you gave me when I left. Mm -hmm. May they know who to speak to, who to tell their business to, and who not to share their business with, Father. Mm -hmm. Lord, mm -hmm. my declaration for all of us, God, is that we're found faithful in the end. We hear that you say, good and well, well done, my good and faithful servant, come into rest, Lord. You desire that none shall perish, but have everlasting life, Father. And that everlasting life, I may decree it now, but you are the ones who knows whose hearts are yours and will continue to be yours in eternity. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. We thank you, Jesus, for saying yes to the Father as you being fully man, but we know you also as fully God who wrapped yourself in skin, had blood pumping through your veins to come to this earth to die and be resurrected. And now you sit at the right hand of the Father making forever making intercession for us. We thank you, Jesus, for that. Amen. 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 May you all rest well. May you sleep well and deep. Yes? Thank you so much. This is good. Yeah. Thank you for your time, guys. Thank you for your time. Anything that thank you, you. Thank you, ma'am. Ah, ah. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> thank you yes and i'll thank share you. contact um in whatsapp yes yes, yes please yeah contact because yeah i have a, i have a south african system i'm so glad you do. <laughs>
the reason why I'm pointing at you is say to God, I was like, God, you gave me an African. Yeah. A funny South African. Because <laughs> she's hilarious. You know, it's like she was always clean of the coast. I'm like, that's not funny, but it's funny. Yeah, yeah. She was very sarcastic too in a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know. Mm, she's like, I forget to Jesus. And he came, I'm like, hi, hey, boo. It's not <laughs> scary if somebody else is telling a story. Right. But you know what? God is good and he's faithful, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. Thank you so much for your time. Thank You're you for sharing. Thank you so much. And again, thank you both. Seriously. I know you guys thanked me, but thank you for just saying yes, you know, to coming and spending and meeting Arai and her mom, Arai text. And she was like, thank you for letting us meet your friends and all of that. So thank you both. Seriously. Yeah. Thank you too. It's our pleasure. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, Unfortunately, you'll be leaving tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, fortunately. Fortunately. No, no, no. I mean for, for us. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, uh, but you <laughs> house, so you always have a place to come and visit, guys. Seriously. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All you have to do no is get and come. Okay. Just get on the plane and then. As soon as you get to the airport, you're sorted. Uh, just that my, my, my green passport will not give me that express visa. <laughs> Wait, I canceled that in the name of Jesus because I'll leave you with this testimony and then you guys can go so when I was first going back to Nigeria after being born again there was there was a lot of kidnapping of Americans and um, business people so they were not mm -hmm. only giving Nigerian visas for Nigeria at the embassy here in Georgia here in Georgia when I was in Georgia and so they said they had put a stop on giving visas for three months before they'll start giving them again but God told me to go, so I went. So the security guard at the embassy in Georgia was like, so you know there's, you know, they had a sign. It was like, no, we're not giving visas. I said, oh, okay, thank you. And I walked right in, okay? The woman at the counter, she was like, did you not hear him? And I'm like, with my, my passport application, all of that, she's like, did you not hear him? Yelling at me. And I was like, yes, ma'am, I heard him. And she's like, I don't understand why you're giving. She's looking at everything. I don't understand. I don't understand. Well, come tomorrow for your denial. I said, okay, ma'am, thank you. And I left. You know, I came back. She's like, why are you here? She's completely demonized. Why are you here? You said, I told you they're not, they're not giving visas. Da, 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 da. And I said, well, can I just have my passport back then? Ah, it's not here. Let me go in the back. And I hear her yelling in the back. Mm. She comes out. She's like, I don't know, you have these people. Here's your visa and throws me my passport. Oh. <laughs> May that be your, all of your portions right now. Oh. So never, never say something you don't want to happen, guys. I'll say that again. Never say something you don't want to happen because the demonic doesn't understand joking. Yeah, and that's why I had to say to you earlier. Said I, you're not annoying. You're not. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yes, <laughs> you two can have that conversation. But for me, because I know the problem was you're not annoying. Thank you for being fatherly. Seriously, seriously. Yes, <laughs> just say thank you. Yo, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. I, I want you to finish. I'm still listening I'm to you. Done. <laughs> <laughs> you're not yeah, I'm done. Just thank you for being fatherly. Oh, no, yeah. Thank you, too. Yeah. Thank you, too. <laughs> thank you, thank too. you for being mother. <laughs> Goodbye, guys. Well, no, see you later. See you later. See you mm. later. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>